<clears throat> well, hey, our next guest, Paul Wenger, president of California Farm Bureau, is here with us. Welcome, Paul. How you doing, Alan? Good hey, to talk to you again. Be great talking to you, buddy. Oh, hearing music like that and get to talk to you, man, doesn't get any better than this. That's pretty good. <clears throat> hey, uh, first of all, our... Um, uh, best wishes to us for speedy recovery to Carly Fiorina. You're here speaking on her behalf. She just had a little surgery, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. We're always glad to be able to step in where we can for Carly. She's a great candidate, and I know uh, you and I have been at a couple events with her, mm -hmm. as well as Meg Whitman. So I think we have some great opportunities coming ahead for California. Great. I, I'm sure she'll be back in the saddle and out on the campaign trail uh, very shortly, and wish her the best. Uh, now, Barbara Boxer was just uh, coming through the valley, I guess, yesterday, was it, Gail? Yep. She was making nine stops, I guess, up and down the state, and the valley was part of that. Yeah, and in her stops here, from what I understand, she really went after Carly Heavy, um, calling her basically undermining jobs here by outsourcing and uh, to other countries when she was at uh, Hewlett Packard and being almost cruel to employees. And, and uh, folks, what's, uh, what's your take on this? Well, it's interesting that uh, Senator Boxer would make that take on it. The one interesting thing when I talk with Carly Fiorina is her last option. Anytime you run a company, you do have to look to what's best for the company and best for the stockholders and the employees because we know that if a company is not successful, then all the employees as well as the ownership of the company is going gonna, is gonna to pay the ultimate price. And Carly wanted to be in California, and while she did outsource some jobs outside of the state into other states in, this, uh, in the United States as well as overseas, it was not the preferred alternative. But when you look about how long it takes to get a company up and running and a new building and a new business up and running in California, the length of time it takes versus other countries, it puts us at a competitive disadvantage. So, of course, you outsource. Uh, Alan, we see the same thing in agriculture. We see a lot of our folks that cannot get uh, things done in California. They're going down south of the border into Mexico with a lot of the produce, the tomatoes, and other things. We see a lot of our dairymen that are moving out of the state of California that are going down into Texas and New Mexico for their dairy operations. Outsourcing jobs out of California is nothing new. But we ought to start saying, why is that happening? And we need someone like Carly Fiorina, who has suffered the consequence and the challenges of trying to cite in California, to be in government to say, folks, this is the problem. Yeah. This is what we need to change. Yeah, you, you know, we, we've talked about it, Paul. Outsourcing is horrible, but you can't, it is not a level playing field. When you have excessive taxation in American companies, uh, uh, burdensome regulations, <clears throat> union demands that are off the charts, and you have an alternative in a global economy, uh, you're going to take it. And, yeah, and, yeah. and the unions are going to have to understand that. Because if we don't start making things, and I've heard Carly talk about this, we have to get the deindustrialization de de of America has killed us because people, the, the politics, the, the over-taxation, over-regulation, out-of-control unions, and the contracts, how do you begin to compete uh, with, with those sets of circumstances of which other countries don't have to deal with? That's right. Because you're not going to be able to sell the goods, right? If, you, if you're making them here and you're going to sell them to the world market, how do you plan on doing that? I mean, they're going to be too expensive, right? Well, and a lot of people think that we can become a service economy here in California, that we don't have to make anything anymore. And you and I well know that until you make something um, – what have you got to sell? The service industry can only service those, but you've got to create wealth from something. You either have to grow it, you have to make it, you have to manufacture it. But the service industry can only support that which is already creating wealth in the state. And for some reason in California, we've gotten to this point, and I think it's because we have been such a dynamic economy worldwide that we have taken for granted what it was that made California great. And so we've kind of been living on what the greatest generation, the World War II generation, came here. They built highways. They built dams. They built infrastructure. And we've lived off of that now for years. And even my generation is 50 years old. What have we done for the next generation to make sure that they have the jobs and they have the infrastructure they need to be a dynamic world economy? And we haven't done that. And when you take somebody like Carly Fiorina, who's been a, a CEO of a major a corporation, she understands all those issues. Barbara Boxer doesn't know what it is to make a job. Well, um, and, and so how can she come and say and challenge Carly Fiorina for what she has done for outsourcing jobs 
What job has Barber Boxer ever created? What do you make of the 40-some-odd farmers and growers and ag organizations that have announced their support for Barber Boxer? How, how do you explain that? Well, there's still an awful lot of folks that have, you know, you have trade negotiations and other things that go on, and there are segments within our industry, the agricultural industry, that uh, <coughs> Senator Boxer has worked with them, and so they feel that, you know, they need to uh, support her for that. Um, well, I, I take a larger view, Alan. Um, you know, we in agriculture, a lot of times, we look just to a site. We, we need a trade uh, agreement, and is there somebody that can help us on a trade agreement? And maybe we can get our products marketed overseas, and so we get some kind of a trade agreement done. But then that same elected official goes around and votes to make sure you don't get water. What good is a trade agreement if you can't grow a product that you can get to the market? Yeah. And, and we have to look more holistically. And, and, and Barbara Boxer, on a case-by-case basis, has helped segments of the agricultural industry, as she has maybe a, of other areas. But she has really hurt us by not getting the infrastructure we need when it comes to water. Exactly. You look at some of this global climate change legislation that she has um, sponsored and endorsed and supported. Um, it's devastating to our agricultural producers, driving up the cost of their doing business. And we can't sustain it long term. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it seems like that the big government, Barbara Boxer, Obama type philosophy is, is to keep farming. Uh, first of all, I think they'd like to see all our nation's our uh, farms go to third world countries. I think uh, ultimately that's where they want it to go, is to make third world countries America's farms. And I think that's a a bad decision. Uh, yep. It's it's also a very dangerous uh, uh, mindset. I think it's uh, with national security uh, implications there. Absolutely. Well, Paul, I truly do believe this. I, I as as sure as I'm sitting here, that the left wants to see farming not only reduced in California and the Valley, in particular Valley, but destroyed. They, they well, do because, but no, I really do, Paul, and yeah. I think that Barbara Boxer's really right in the middle of that yeah. because it, I think they, it's all political. They see this uh, region, the San Joaquin Valley, as a, you know, kind of an anomaly in an otherwise very liberal state, and they hear these, this conservative region, and they, they in their minds they go, hmm, farming, hard work, basic, uh, you know, family values, that breeds conservatism, let's get rid of this place, then California will never, those 55 electoral votes will never be in jeopardy of going uh, going uh, Republican. And by the way, anyway, you know, we're going to get our food from third world countries anyway. Uh, let me ask you this, because we just got one more, uh, just a couple of minutes here, Paul, and we'll have you back on. The, uh, Boxer also charged that Carly supports more tax breaks for companies that ship jobs overseas, is that true? Boy, I haven't heard that. I don't know where she gets. I that. don't. But then again, that just because she says it doesn't mean she had the basis of facts. Uh, um, unfortunately, um, you know, over the years we've been able to work very good with Senator Feinstein on a lot of issues. Estate tax uh, in your neck of the woods for a lot of our farmers down in the Fresno area in the Central Valley, it's a key issue. And Senator Feinstein has been very receptive when we go and talk to. Uh, Senator Boxer, she seems to be not sure exactly where things are as it relates to a state tax. Carly mm-hmm. Fiorina has made this one of her big issues, is that why are we taxing a family when there's no sale uh, of the family farm? It's just transferring from one family to another right. member of the family at the time of death, and yet we want to have this egregious tax assessed to them. Um, those are the kinds of taxes that Carly Fiorina wants to try to get away from. Those are the types of taxes that should go away. I don't know what Barbara Boxer is talking about, tax breaks for folks that ship jobs or business overseas. That's well, just ludicrous. I think that's you're going to see a lot of that from her because what else does she have, really, honestly, yep. in, in today's climate? Paul, thank you so much for being with us, buddy. Look forward to have you on yeah, here. Thanks for letting us be a part of your morning. Hey, we got the better end of that deal. Thanks, okay. thanks Paul. We'll see you. Take care. We're going to take a quick break. we come back. We're going to have Mr. Paco Underhill. Is that a name? Paco Underhill. I want that name. We'll be right back. Get bus and Kern commuter.